So in this video, we're talking about polarity on the subwoofer. Now, this happens to be a VRS-18. This could be any subwoofer because almost all subwoofers have this one switch here. Now, we're also going to talk about the time aligning delay. So if you have a subwoofer time alignment delay, we'll mention a little bit on how this works because this isn't too complicated once you know what's going on here because this confuses a lot of people on the where and how. So again, time alignment delay, second half of the video, first half, Pretty straightforward, reverse, normal, or zero versus 180 when it comes to polarity. So you can invert it, because you might have heard those words a bit. Inverted or normal, reverse, normal. Those are the words we're gonna be using in today's video. Now that's gonna also work in conjunction with the speaker we have up above. So let's take a look at that. So on top, we've got the actual VR412. Again, this is from Harbinger's, their rental series you can also buy now. Uh, now this is going to be set up slightly different than we normally would have it set up with the subwoofer because I wanna show you generically, maybe you're just renting a subwoofer or buying their sub and you wanna hook it up to your speaker. So regardless what brand the speaker can be on top, the one thing you do wanna pay attention to is if you have setting options for vocals or, or EQing options, make sure it's in standard. And if you have an option to turn your sub cut off, so this way you can either cut it off at 80 Hertz, so this way you're not gonna put that in here. Let's turn that off for the test, okay? We're also gonna to wanna to set the volume at no more than 25%. This is a low volume test. And more importantly, we're gonna do this test at 80 Hertz. You could also do it at 150, but you have to decide on which is best and easiest for you. Volume is not going to be the issue because we're going to distinguish the difference by actually adjusting the polarity. So let's leave this be. Again, it's all hooked up. Back down to the subwoofer. Let's have a look here. So here we are back at the subwoofer. What did I do? I plugged my mixer into the actual subwoofer and then from the output, I went to my top speaker. That's pretty much straightforward. For my crossover frequency adjustments, in this case, I'm doing my tests at full range. So when I'm finished, I will make adjustments between 180 Hertz. Most likely I'll probably leave it around 90, but the idea is to get maximum base reference out of the actual system. So this way you can leave this personally adjusted at any way you want, or maybe your sub doesn't have this option. So you really wanna make sure you get it right. So right versus wrong, that can be either reversed or normal. Depends on your top speaker. This is very, very important. This is also why your speakers need to be lined up properly. So you wanna have your top in line with your subwoofer below it. Regardless if it's to the left or right, you do want distance to be lined up. So how are we gonna do this? Pretty simple. I'm gonna run a test tone through here. I'm gonna adjust the actual volume a little bit here. We're gonna be able to see it on the meter and then I'll be able to switch between the two. Now, today I've made sure to include all 80 hertz frequencies in the video. So this way I have nothing cutting it off before you get to hear it. So hopefully you can hear it on whatever device you have. But again, if you're listening to this on your phone, your phone is probably naturally gonna cut this off anyways. So again, you'll be able to see it on the actual meter. We'll have that on the center of the screen and you'll be able to easily see the difference between the 80 coming up and down. So let's take a quick look at the meter and let's pick our 80 Hertz right here. It's gonna tap that on the screen. So see, I can, with this program here, I'll put the link for this program down below for you so you get a better idea of what's going on here. So what I'm gonna try and do is narrow this down to get it right there. That seems, that's 76, okay? We're gonna leave it at 76. This way it gets you a good idea. But so you have an idea of where that peak is. The top part right there, that's the 80 Hertz. So we're pretty close. So again, if I run it in normal mode, we'll be able to pull down and you're going to see that we're gonna almost cut the volume in half, if not by three times via dB. So you're gonna see a difference between this 20, which is where you're normally gonna peak at, and you'll be down around 40, minus 40, which is a dramatic volume difference, by the way, because this is where every time you move up six dBs, you're doubling the volume. We're gonna be somewhere around minus 32, and then we'll be able to get to minus 20 without touching the volume dials. Just by changing reverse to normal, we're gonna be able to change the overall dBs by at least 12. Very, very impressive. So let's do that and see how that works. So first I gotta go back, turn the actual music on. So music, so this is only a test tone of 80 Hertz. Do not try and play music. You will never figure out if you're getting it right or not. So here we go, all the way up there, 
watch this. So what I'm doing right now is I'm finding the magic point. If I go too low on the subwoofer, if I go too high, the range will kick back up. But if I go just to the lowest point right there, we're at 27 hertz right now. And we're gonna put it back to normal and we'll see this jump back up. Look at that, back up to 20. That is what we're talking about right there. It's as simple as that. Let's do that. There we are, pulling up at minus 20 dBs, dropping it all the way down to about 30 if I stay quiet. Back up again, down. And that's all I've done. Now, of course, watch if I adjust the volume here. By simply turning down my top, the bass is going to increase. If I go too high on top, so I'm compensating with more energy on top just to make up. All I really need to do is make sure the subwoofer is running in the right direction. And that's it. When it comes to doing that one specific thing, that one specific thing, that will definitely tell you the difference right away. I'm only running them at 25% and it'll happen pretty simultaneously. Switching it up and down, you're definitely gonna get it louder or lower. Now the second one requires a little bit more effort. So we're gonna put this in the normal mode. Now the idea here is that we're going to offset the cycle of the actual speaker. So that's why they're giving it a time delay because they're increasing or decreasing the cycle rate. So this way there's a pause basically before they let it go. Now for this to really work out, if you do it from standing behind the speaker, it's gonna sound perfect here at some level. So if I turn it up, I can make it sound louder right here, but that doesn't guarantee that on the dance floor that's gonna be right. What you really wanna do is set your phone up on a chair, turn the meter on like I've done here, hit the record if you have to, but normally you're gonna get this right in about one or two shots. So by putting the meter on and just walking back and forth, if you can't adjust the volume from the app itself, like normally from your phone, uh, then you have to come back and make small adjustments on the back of the speaker. We're gonna do this adjustments 25% at a time. So we're gonna go, so we're gonna make adjustments from the bottom to basically nine o'clock, then 12 o'clock, then three o'clock, and then full, and see what the dramatic differences are. And then once you get this dialed in, you won't have to go back over and over and over again. You'll know what it pretty much needs to be the next time you're setting it up. So we'll start at the bottom, we'll take a quick listen to it and we'll see how easy it is to see and hear the difference. We're gonna bring the speakers back up to 25%. Then we're gonna turn our actual time delay. Notice here, we're standing behind the speakers dropped. No guarantee that's what it is in the middle of the dance floor. That's why you need to go to the middle of the dance floor and hear it there. And see there, it happened again. Our best spot here was actually at 11 o'clock. Down again, starts to come back up again. And again, you wanna check that in the middle of the dance floor to see if you're getting louder. Go lower here, take a look, see, and then you're gonna find a sweet spot. If you have somebody to help you, then you're gonna be really lucky being able to set that. And you're gonna get your maximum performance out of it. Now I would repeat that at 80 and 150 Hertz. This way you get maximum response out of it. Your speaker's gonna to top off in this case at 150. So you definitely wanna try this at both and see if it's the same for at a lower 80 Hertz frequency as it is at 150 in the middle of the dance floor. And there you go. Reverse, sometimes you're gonna put in reverse and it's gonna sound better because your speaker's running backwards than your subwoofer. So you're basically matching them up again. Sometimes it's not. All right, well, if you wanna learn more about the level setting right here, that's gonna be the video that's gonna be at the end of the video, which you can watch right now. It'll be available for you to watch. So if you wanna know more about your minus 10 plus four DBU, DBV options on your subwoofer, by all means, have a look at that video. This is all part of a series of actual videos made to be more educational. So I hope this one helped and I hope you find more videos that are helpful for your next personal setup. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.